Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have an opportunity to work on one of those reels that I really enjoy working on. This is the damn quick, in this case it's the 441N. It's a bigger reel. It's about a 50 size or a 60 size reel by today's standards. It's a saltwater reel. It was sent in by Philip from New York. And well, it's just sluggish. And that usually means that we have a lot of dried grease and dirt. We have a reel that hasn't been serviced in a while, but that's okay. We'll take care of that. We're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how to service it. We're going to show you how to keep it running for a long time to come. Just wanted to check the bail. I've checked the, uh, the other pieces and parts. They seem to be okay. So let's get started. We're going to get started by removing the exterior pieces and parts. And as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos. And well, if you like the art of reel repair, if you like to understand how fishing reels are made, how they come apart, how they get serviced, and how they keep running, well, this is the channel for you. Well, we're going to take off the spool. This one has an easy remove spool. You push down on the button that will release the spool from the axle shaft. Then looking inside here, it's kind of telling me that, yep, this is the issue. We got a whole bunch of just dried, dirty grease sitting on that nut there and I'm sure that's what we're going to see on the inside. Kind of has the consistency of putty and well that's going to slow a reel down for sure. Well we're not going to do anything on the top here. We're going to go underneath this thing when we'll remove the axle shaft and then we'll be able to get to that. You may see I already started removing the pin that holds the handle and you're going to want to do that because that's how you're going to remove the main gear later. I have a punch set it has all kinds of shapes and sizes of the punches. A little convenient hammer and everything in there. I don't remember exactly where I got it. Probably Amazon. It's not a very expensive set to get. If you're going to work on damn quick reels, you're going to need the punches. Well, I found the right one. It's going to center into that hole there. You can tap the pin out. And if you're lucky, you'll get the pin to stay in that little uh, ridge but past the point where it's needed to get through the, the handle part. And that makes it easier to install when it's time to reinstall. When I take the pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container to hold my parts. And I always recommend that you have a system to deal with the parts that you remove from the reel. I get notes from time to time from folks that say, I've taken the reel apart can't get it back together. Can you help me? I call them reel in a bag projects. I'm happy to help uh, try and get that reel back together again. But one of the things that's often missing is the parts because some parts were left on the desk or uh, rolled off the table or got lost in transit, whatever. Just make sure that as you take these off, you know where they go and you know where you're storing them when it's time to re reinstall. Where do they go? Take pictures along the way, like that little shim washer goes between the handle and this adjuster. This adjuster makes it a collapsible handle. When you tighten it out, it, it tightens the handle up and holds firm. When you want to collapse it, you, you turn it clockwise and move it in. To remove the main gear, you're going to have to remove the adjuster. We'll do that right now. And again, take pictures along the way. You'll see here, a little bit later we'll do this, there's an E-clip that also holds that main gear on in place. All right, there's three screws here. Those screws are gonna actually go through to the other side. These three points here are the bottoms of those screws. This one's always fun because I noticed that people make the mistake when they go to reinstall of trying to put the main gear on the other side. These are kind of interchangeable. And yes, you can change the here, the, this reel from a left-hand drive reel a left hand crank reel to a right hand crank reel. But it's not as simple as just swapping the gears over. You have to change some of the internals, the swing arm for the, uh, the oscillation, etc., in order to make that work. So just again, take the three out, make sure that they're the same size screws they are, put them in a safe place in your parts tray, and now you can pull the main gear out. I think we probably have the cross mine arm attached on this side. Let's take a look. 
Now we can pull the, the side plate and we can pull the pin. That's what's holding this, this gear in place right now. But we can do this two ways. And the easy way to do this is to take the E-clip off at this point. So that's held in place by uh, a ridge on the main gear. I'm just going to use a, a small screwdriver, a mini screwdriver, to pull up on it, holding it so that it doesn't shoot. And that's your E-clip. Put that into my porch tray. There's a little shim washer that goes behind that E-clip. Again, take your pictures. And for this purpose, what I'm going to do is just push the main gear through now or remove that back side plate. With that done, there's a peg here or a stud or a pin. I guess it can be called a hundred different things, but here's the issue with the reel. You can see all this dried and shellacked grease here. Pull the pin out, take a picture. You're going to want to note where that goes. And now you can pull the axle shaft up after that main gear just kind of falls off. Since this is shellacked grease, what I'm going to do is soften it and I'm going to use a penetrating oil. In this case, I'm going to use a WD-40 penetrating oil to do the softening. And then I have a bench vise, you won't see it, but I'm just going to take that square part of the gear here, put that into the bench vise and let that puddle of penetrating oil just sit there while I do some of the other cleanup. So this, a little bit on this, we'll see how bad it is. And just use a cotton swab to kind of mop that up. We'll set that into my parch tray. There's a bunch on the back of this one, same thing. Look at that. You wonder why the reel is performing suboptimally. Well, that's it right there. When that gets into the gears, the when you're cranking, it actually is fighting against that sort of like walking through mud. It's just going to bog you down. And that's what happens there. I right, cleaned the back of that casing. That can go. And now we can remove the axle shaft. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Talk about bad grease in there. That's uh, That was a trip, if you will, pulling that up and out. A little bit of grease. This is a 4.0 steel wall. It's a buffing steel wall. I'm just going to lightly pull down to remove the the old grease on that. And you'll notice I have a paper towel on my uh, my bench. And that's to keep most of that dirt and grease and grime and debris off the bench so I don't transfer it to the next project. Well, we got some more here. So let's clean this up. And a lot of what you're doing when you're servicing a reel is, is just this. You're, you're doing a cleanup of the old greases and the like. Then you're doing parts inspection. You want to make sure all the pieces and parts are good. If they're broken, well, you're going to have to replace them. And on a reel like this, it's getting increasingly difficult to find these reels. They were well over engineered at the time. They're treasures, but uh, finding replacement parts for them is not easy. All right, well, we've cleaned up that side plate now. And you want to remember that when we took this off, the drive side was the side that just had the short uh, reach and that the main side uh, had the cover in addition to it. All right, we got to get that nut off there because we want to remove the main gear. I think that's a 10 millimeter piece and the only way you can get that off is with a deep socket. You can't take a wrench like this and work in it. It's just not, not going to be able to close that. Let's grab a 10 and see if that's the piece. Okay, well, I had to stop the video for a moment because the walls on these uh, sockets were too thick, so I had to go find one that was thinner, and I can use a nut driver on this. So we'll do it this way. And that way we'll be able to get that nut out. There's a shim washer under here. Pay attention to the way that this spring is set for your bale. And we should be able to remove this up and off now. Again, there's a washer on there. Pay attention to it. I'm just going to use a little bit of penetrating oil there. And while I'm at it, I'm going to oil the two sides 
of the bail arms. Now this bail was working, so you don't need to do anything with that. Here's your internal look at the uh, mechanism. This is going to be your uh, trip mechanism. This is a, a um, snap ring, and that's going to hold your piece in. So in order to remove a snap ring, ring you need the aptly named snap ring pliers. I'm going to put one in each side. They come with studs. Put it in each side. Hold the top of it. This thing can shoot and you'll be looking for it for a long time to come if it does. So that's your snap ring. And here's a closer look at the snap ring pliers. They're kind of on a 90 degree and they each have a stud and they fit into the holes of the snap ring just like that. Okay, put that in. There's a tension washer underneath. It's a rippled washer. Don't try to straighten it out. And we should be able to pull the main assembly, the pinion gear, and the bearing out with that. Put those into the basket. Should be able to get this washer off. We took the washer off. We got the bearing. And it's, we're going to do the same thing here. This one's been lubed. Now, I don't normally lubricate bearings, but when I find bearings that have all of the greases in there, I, I generally will go back and do that again. There's that washer I was talking about. Looks like we're packed on both sides here. And what I'm going to do, I'll just let the penetrating oil do its thing. And we'll come over here and we'll clean up the main uh, pinion gear. To do that, we'll do the same thing. We're going to hose that down to get that dried grease. And you can see why the performance on this one is so poor. It's all that dried grease in there, not allowing the reel to track. This is why I put the paper towel down. All that stuff would be on the bench if I didn't. And I'm just using a hard brush to clear those channels. Another good squirt to dissolve what's left in those tracks. Now I'll wipe it down with the paper towel. I'm holding my, my fingers to it so that I'm kind of clearing out the tracks with my nail. You can't see that, but that's what I'm doing. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, just kind of leave it in the, uh, the section there. I'll try to answer those questions for you. I'm going to put that bearing back on, give it a spin. It's spinning nicely. So that's not an issue with this uh, particular reel. It's got a, a good amount there. I'm just going to go ahead, wipe this down one more time, get some of that older grease away. Now because that's grease packed, I'm going to leave it with the grease. I'll just put some fresh grease on the top. There are bearing blasters. I actually have one around here somewhere. You can blast it out and repack. This one doesn't seem to be complaining. I'm going to leave it as it is. What did seem to be tough was getting that axle shaft out. And you can see there's a lot of dried grease on both sides here. So I'm just going to put my finger over the one side, hold this down, flood it with some penetrating oil, and we'll see if we can work another uh, cotton swab through there. Pick up all that old grease, kind of clean that channel out. And then the best thing to do is just test that right before you even go back. Just put your axle shaft back in and make sure that it runs up and down nice and smooth, which it does. All right, time to reinstall this. Before we reinstall, you want to get your grease brush and your fishing reel grease. I'm using uh, Pen Precision Reel Grease for that. Let's go ahead and grease up the teeth of this pinion gear. We can actually put a little bit more grease in the bottom of this bearing. And make sure you get some grease onto the post, which is going to ride in the cavity inside the reel. Before we go there, we want to get that last bit of uh, old grease off the side case. Even though it's not going to come in contact with anything, if you leave the old grease there, it can become a contaminant. It could have metal pieces and parts in it, filings and the like. Something could break free and jam the reel up again. So don't, don't 
no skimp. But if you're going to take the time to fix the reel, take the time to fix the reel. It's not a race. Have patience and do it the right way. And you won't have to worry when you're out on the water that uh, the reel is going to fail you. Okay, that's a pretty good clean up there. This reel was totally over-engineered. That's kind of what the, the dam quicks are all about. The dam is Deutsche Manufacturer Engelet, which means the German fishing company. And uh, they were totally over-engineered for the time. Take our pinion gear and insert that back in. Make sure it gets in nice and square. Push down on your bearing to make sure it's seated all the way. Remember, you're going to have a, a slot here where we're going to have to put that E-clip. Next up, there was a, a flat washer. Then we had the tension washer. Then we have that snap ring. Again, be careful with these. These are when, As soon as you put these under pressure, they tend to want to shoot. So uh, be careful with them. What I like to do is seat to one side and hold it, compress, and push down as best I can, and then finish that by pushing down until you hear that snap. That means that it's uh, set properly. All right, these can come off the table because, well, they got a lot of junk on it, and uh, we don't want junk on it. All right, so that turns nicely now. The next thing we want to do is we're going to do the same cleanup here. We've had this sitting over on the side for a while. Now you, do, you can remove this swing arm. You do not need to remove this swing arm. If you are switching this around to the other side, you do need to remove this swing arm because you have to set it up reverse. If that makes sense to you. In other words, the arm would face out, not face in. To grab the post from the other side. So you can see that we have that same dried grease situation on the main. And we're doing the same thing. We're using that hard brush to do as much as we can to get the old grease out of there and do that cleanup. One more set, which is, is a different brush because that other one's pretty dirty. Okay, I'm in good step with that. Just going to wipe that down now. And one more time with these teeth. I just noticed that there was a little bit more than I had thought that there was in there. All right, we're in good shape. All right, we're going to take the, the grease now. We'll grease up the main gear. Just like that. And I'm going to just uh, put a little bit here. It's not going to move on too much of anything with that swing arm. We'll just put a little off to the side. Before I go any further now, it's time to reinstall the, the rotor. Check below, make sure that it's clean. It's a good time to use a fishing wheel cleaner. It'll be one chance to, to clean the reel up. So I'm going to get a little kitchen scrubby. I use uh, Pen Precision Reel Cleaner. It's kind of a cleaner in a wax. And it will take off some film, maybe some things like fish scales and that if you wind it. You can use it on the rod as well as the reel. And now let's go ahead and put that back on here. When you do this, you're going to want to push up on that uh, pinion gear. We have that washers inside there. Now we're going to use our hand to start this because you don't want to cross strip it. And again, take your time. This is an odd one because of the the way that it's set here. And you have to find that thin-walled 
um, ratchet socket. Just keep playing with it, eventually you will get it. I got it there. If it's not turning easy, stop. You don't want to cross strip this. Okay, we got it. We're done. You can give it a spin. This is the override here. Let you flip it both ways. Get that nice noise that those classic reels make. All right, we've got our axle shaft that we know is, is working nicely. Just a thin coat of grease. You put too much in there and it's going to dry like the other one did and it's going to come down and well, you're going to become a problem. That goes through our piece here. Now we can put the main gear in. And we can attach that crossbar arm. Oh, I guess we can go all the way with the main gear at this point. Put the main gear back in. Put our mount on. A little bit of grease onto the shaft of the main gear. Let's go and put that back on. Shim washer. And make sure you have the access at this point to that groove that's going to hold the E-clip. If you're having difficulty with the E-clip, use an assist. Use a pair of pliers or something to pull that in. Off the, off the reel. Trying to balance too many things here. There we go. So that's your clip. And to make sure it turns easy after you've installed that clip. Now we can kind of snake it back and through. And then you want to seat it, making sure that it's properly inset into the case. That's the one side. We'll bring this over now. Bring the axle shaft down. Swing the arm over. Go onto your parts tray and get the pin. And insert that pin through. When you insert that pin, make sure it is flush and then it's not protruding. Okay, with that done now, you can give it a quick turn. I'm gonna hold the whole assembly together, but just make sure it's turning the way that you would expect it to turn, and this one's just operating like a clock, just turning beautifully. Well, we can close this up then. So what we wanna do next becomes the side plate. And then we have the plate, and this plate Again, it's not perfectly triangular, so you will see that the medallion reads this way, and that would make sense. It's hanging from a rod. You can read the name of the piece. On some of these damn quicks, you have uh, ones that are symmetrical or triangular. They're all kind of the same sides. You can flip them, and a lot of times you need to pay attention to where the click ratchet is on the anti-reverse override because it's mounted for the gear. On those reels, uh, take a picture before you start taking it apart so that you know the orientation of it. Three screws go in next. We'll check the spool out. Do we put the handle on? The handle, we have the shim washer that goes on the handle. 
and we have our little adjuster here. Remember when it's fully in you've got a collapsible handle and you turn it outside to set the handle rigid. And one of the nice things about leaving that pin in is you have the orientation to the, the post. I like to just tap it through. I'm using a dead blow hammer. But just tap it through a little bit like that. That's probably too much. But leave it coming through a little bit and then as you go to put it on to your handle you'll feel it when it clicks in to the spot. Of course it was just a little bit too much. I kind of figured that out didn't I? Pull that out a little bit. It's an iterative game. There you go. When you put that in now, you can tap that back in using a dead blow hammer. You don't want to mar anything. I'm trying to show this for the camera is not easy. And make sure you're beneath the handle there. To tighten that handle up now, counterclockwise, and that's how you set your handle. And we know now this is just going to crank away beautifully. All right, let's take a look at that spool, see what we can see. This spool has tensioning numbers on it that's supposed to correspond to max drag. I have yet to figure out how that does that, but it's supposed to. Very similar to a Mitchell spool. You're going to remove this adjuster knob and then underneath here we have a drag stack. There's a big heavy C ring in here. This is the bottom end of it with the click ratchet. I'm going to leave this in because my experience with these reels is that it's not easy to reinstall these drag washers with that post out. Let's use that uh, micro driver again to see if we can't get this C ring out. Again, I'm holding my finger. I don't want this ring to shoot. That's the ring clip that's going to hold it on. And I guess you can pull this out to, to get the drag washers out. Make sure you clean the cavity of the, the spool. There's a little bit of dirt in the bottom of it. My kind of all-purpose cleaner here, that uh, WD-40 or penetrating oil. I don't have a preference. Uh, that's... Uh, going to make the difference. Looks like we have just two washers in here. This one is a hard washer so you don't need to do anything with this one. The way that this sets up is you get this little tension washer in first. Then we have the octagonal washer. Then we have the oct octagonal drag washer. Then we have the round washer. I just said before, it probably goes in a lot easier with this thing out and set in place because this has got that ridge side on it. So let's go ahead and put that back in, put that on. Now we can grab that circular clip again. Not an easy install here. One side goes into the groove. A lot of hand strength required on this one. Make sure you sit seat it into that groove. And now we can put our star our, our drag knob back on. Put that onto the reel. Make sure it snaps on. Tighten it up. Make sure that it holds. It does. And then back it off. And uh, well, we're kind of ready for a beautiful running reel. Nice click, click, click of the, the old vintage. And let's make sure the bell clips nice and easily, which it does. This does have the anti-reverse override, so you can backpedal the reel to fight the reel if you like. And you may need to do so because this does not have a very high max drag on it. It only has that one washer there. Okay, well, that's the servicing of the 
uh, damn quick 441N. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. Your efforts are appreciated. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching. Have a great day fishing. Make sure that your tackle is serviced so that, uh, well, you don't lose the fish of a lifetime due to a poorly maintained reel. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.